Okay, so this talk is inspired by Fulcro and Pathom, which is a full stack, batteries included, closure script framework uh, built on top of React. Well, at least Fulcro is, Pathom is the backend part, the graph API part. And it's based on a few simple ideas. And understanding that no framework can fit every project perfectly, so it tries really hard to be adaptable to the unique needs you might have. Now, I don't expect you to drop everything and go learning ClojureScript and full crawl, or not yet. So why am I talking about this? I want to show you what's possible, <clears throat> and I want to inspire you to look for better developer experience, for better frameworks, better tools, better flow, uh, perhaps better languages. Don't stack get stuck with whatever is mainstream. Look for what is the best and most productive for your case. So what are the ideas that uh, Fulcro is based on? The first one is using Graph API instead of uh, multiple REST endpoints. Uh, so the, the Graph API, the most known case of Graph API is GraphQL, gives you a single endpoint which can serve all or most of the data that your web application needs. And it's the client who, in a way, decides what data it gets uh, because it sends a query to the backend describing what it wants. And so you could say it's in a way similar to SQL, right? You send a query, you get data back. But in the case of SQL, the data you get back is table. In the case of a graph API, I guess you might guess is it's a graph. Most uh, commonly, it's a tree. So imagine uh, you want to fetch a list of players, and for each player, you want to include her name and home address. And for each home address, you care only about the city. So this is a tree, right? So the second idea is collocation. So why do we build web applications? It is to enable people to interact with our systems. So in a sense, web application is user interface. And UI components are the key thing there. And to understand what a UI component does and what why it exists, I don't want to, to be forced to go through four different files to, to piece it together. I want to have everything I need to understand directly at the same place as the component, or maybe one click away. Uh, so this is the idea of fat components. The component is the source of truth and uh, shows how things work. And the final thing is normalized data. So the, the data, when it comes from the graph API, is not stored as is. The tree is not stored as a tree. Uh, but the data is deduplicated. So when I change a piece of data, it will show updated at all the places on the screen that use it. Imagine two players living together on the same address, and I update address. I want the new one to show for both. So let's have a look at some code. Uh, imagine you have a web shop. And you have been asked to show a list of hot deals in the web shop. And for reasons, the data should be loaded when the component is displayed, not earlier. So we will look at two implementation. First, a traditional implementation using Redux and REST, and then using full crawl and a graph API with Pathom. Here is our component that renders the HTML. So first, we ask for the data to be loaded when this component is mounted. That's what React use effect does in this case. If it failed, we show an error. If we are still waiting for data to arrive, we show loading. Otherwise, we show the list of the individual deals. Uh, and this component we don't show is doing the details. So this is pure React. Uh, we need to get in these, this data, these properties or props, as we say, 
uh, to render it. So those we need to connect to the Redux state. And we ask here from the state, pick me these three things I'm interested in and render me again if they change. And yeah, some more magic. So we go on to the next file, actions.js. And this is quite a traditional way how to structure a Redux application. Doesn't seem to make sense for this small one, uh, but it makes sense for bigger ones. And uh, actually, in the UI, we don't load the data directly. We don't go to the backend server to fetch them. We want uh, some kind of separation between those two things. It makes it easier to maintain. So we what, what we actually do in the UI is we dispatch an action asking for data. And this function defines that action. We call it load hot de deals. And uh, here is actually here we actually call the function, the low level networking function, which will provide the data. So on to our, our third file, that's the backend client client file. Uh, where we define that function. Uh, and here is a low level networking detail. So which URL to talk to and translating the text that comes back into JavaScript data structures. And onto our fourth and final file, uh, reducer.js. Reducer is the piece of functionality that runs uh, when uh, the data well, yeah, when the data arrives, essentially, or around. So here we say, uh, I when the action we are processing is the load hot deals action, we want to handle it. And I'm using a library Redux pack that makes it easier. And it provides us with uh, four events. Typically, we get three of those. Start event, then I say deals are loading. Uh, so I can show the loading think in the UI. When it finishes, I say, no, not loading anymore. If it failed, then I store the error. Or if it succeeded, I store the actual deals I got from the backend. And you would repeat this for every data source. That's a lot of lines and a lot of fun for somebody, maybe. OK, the backend, that's a trivial. We have the actual business function, which loads data from somewhere and some plumbing to expose the data at some URL as JSON. So that was the Redux and REST solution. Let's see how it works with uh, full crow and a graph API. So this is the front end, all of the front end. Don't try to read the code. You don't know the syntax, so you will be just confused, I guess. Uh, just listen to me. I will explain the important bits and pieces. Uh, only very briefly, this is an array, essentially. This is a map. And this is calling something function or, or something else. So we define stateful component, hot deals. So that's equivalent to the function hot deals we saw before in uh, the Redux solution. And it gets to arguments, reference to itself, and props. So th these are the React props we need to render the body. But there is something new. We not only provide the body that renders the HTML, we also provide some additional data. And most important of those is this query. Here, the component declares what data it wants. And it says, I want the deals. I don't care what's inside. That's the deal component which decides. I just include the, the query that it has. So we see here that the queries do compose. I, I don't need to care about what data my, or I don't need to hard code here what data my children need. I just include them. And we also ask uh, Fulcor to give us this deals marker that I will explain briefly. Now we go to the body of the component. Uh, we use use effect as we did in Redux. And when we load this component, so we ask it to load the data. And here notice, I don't call my own fetch hot deals function. 
because I don't need to. Uh, here I, I just use the framework provided load method and tell it, give me all the deals and for each deal, give me whatever the deal component needs. And please be so kind, include a progress marker and call it deals marker so I can look at uh, how the request is going. Uh, so that, that's the power of uh, Graph API and declarative queries. Uh, I have this unified way to fetch data and the backend, uh, the Graph API knows how to answer these data queries. And I can just send the query from the component. And here we have the body. Uh, so I get the progress marker from the props. And then essentially the same code we saw in uh, Redux. If it failed, we show error. If it's loading, we show loading. Uh, otherwise, we show a list of the individual deals. So the, the three important things here are we declare what the what data the component needs on the component, and then we can use the built-in load function instead of writing our own. And we have built-in progress tracking. We just need to ask for it to to, to get it. Nazar, I see you. Uh, okay, and the backend is uh, quite similar. We have the business function, and here instead of a controller for some URL, we define a resolver that can return a field, as they call it in GraphQL. So this resolver says, I can provide you with deals, and for each deal, I can provide you with ID and title and so on. Uh, so this is something we can use when developing. I can uh, run an interactive query thing to look at data. And the Graph API itself uses it to find out how to answer the query that you send it, how, where to find the data you want. And then we just return whatever we promised to return using the business function. So. In the Redux and REST solution, uh, we saw a number of things that we, that I don't want. I don't want to have to synchronize change across two, three, four files. The UI file, the uh, reducer, the action, the backend client files. I don't want to track fail, uh, to do failure tracking and loading progress tracking manually. And I certainly don't want to do this again and again for each single endpoint. I don't want to write data fetching function for each endpoint. In this case, I know I'm always, or I always want JSON. And if there is any error, I want to handle that in the UI. Uh, so I don't want, don't need any specific function to there. Why should I write it? Same thing essentially all the time again. And I don't want to coordinate loading data from a number possible number of uh, endpoints where some of the data might depend on some other data. The Graph API can figure that out for me and just give me the whole thing. And I don't want to maintain consistency of duplicated data, so I want the data normalized in the client. So I don't want repetition, I don't want to boilerplate. What I want is minimal friction when getting some new data from the backend to the UI. So in the full crawl case, we saw I just need to add the res define a resolver that can actually produce the data. And I use data in the UI. That's all. There's nothing in between. No reducer, no action, no backend client thingy. I want this built-in request status tracking, error loading, and don't want to write it myself all the time. I want this built-in data fetching that I can get because I have this unified graph API and declarative queries. And I want smart caching on the client which stores the data, deduplicate it so that I don't get uh, out of sync data in the UI. And this is a big one. 
I want to be able easily switch between loading modes, between saying data for this component should be loaded with all the other data when the application is loading, or it should start loading with all the other data, but don't wait for it. Just give it to the component when it's ready, but the other components don't need to wait for it because I know it takes time and it's not that important. It can show up later. Or as we did in this case, load the data on demand when the component is actually displayed. And obviously I want to edit as few different places as possible. And if I have to edit different places, I want to be able to easily navigate between those related places. So I want a framework that provides me this. That is full stack and integrated. That means the backend and the front end are made to work together with each other with minimal friction. A framework which has batteries included and where the developers don't think that the, they know best and can make all the decisions for me, but a framework that gives me some adaptability. I want a framework that provides Rav API for the reasons demonstrated. That makes it possible for me to have this, for each component to declare what data it needs uh, and compose to that the data needs of its children without anybody else than the component having to know what data it actually needs. Uh, of course, a side of the server that needs to be able to provide those data. I want this collocation, this fat components where everything important, what data the component needs, uh, what route it should be available under, and so on. I want to have that at one place as much as possible. And I don't want data duplication for reasons explained. So all those batteries included, error handling and loading tracking we talked about, uh, this ability to easily switch between loading synchronously, asynchronously, or on demand. And actually, Fulcro gives me a number of other very nice things that I got quite used to, like routing, but also UI state machines, which are very neat if you have some more complex uh, interaction flows that you need to keep track of, then you really appreciate it. Now, I understand that uh, not everybody can make the jump to Closure, closure script and full curl. So if you are stuck in JavaScript land, then you might have a look at Facebook Relay and GraphQL. Uh, obviously, I think it's not as nice and powerful and flexible as full curl and closure script, but it's still, I think, much better than Redux and REST. Uh, and just to be clear, REST is perfect for some cases, but I don't think it's a good fit for highly interactive, uh, rich front-end applications. So I, I don't think REST is bad, it's just not so good fit here. So, uh, small homework for you, go and read or watch uh, something about the GraphQL to understand why and when it makes sense uh, compared to REST, and perhaps have a look at Relay or maybe Apollo. That's, uh, and if you are interested, you can learn more about full crow and closure and closure script. Maybe I could just say closure is something that compiles to the Java byte code, while closure script is dialect of closure that uh, is transpiled to JavaScript. Thank you.